we now conclude chapter 8. And in the conclusion of chapter 8, well, in the first part of the chapter, we spoke about coming from a bad space. Now you're out of that bad pl place, rather, out of a bad place, right? That's what tshuva is on the first level. We're now going into a higher level of tshuva, a higher level of penitence. Whereas the first level is to re uh, return the hay in God's name, the latter hay, which in my soul represents my behavior of thought, speech, and action, where that's where I can, you know, soil my clothes. What's clothes? Clothes are an expression of the person. What are the clothes that we wear that express us? Our thoughts express us, our speech, and our actions express us, right? Thought expresses me to me, <laughs> right? Speech, me to you, and actions, of course, me to you and the whole world, right? So that's what the latter hay represents. In the divine order, it represents Malchus the Shekhinah, the divine presence, as we explain. So behavior, when, it, when we fall off the wagon in our behavior, and now we return onto the wagon, we return the hay of our soul back to its right place. The hay in, the, in God, the, the Shekhinah, to its right place, right? And then God brings a new divine flow as a result of that compassion that we've had to do that, that he brings infinite compassion and a new light that now cleanses everything because of our return, right? So it's like two parts there. Um, now we can go to the next level, not just to get out of a bad place, but to go into a really good space because the first form of tshuva is a tshuva is a, is repentance from doing something wrong in your behavior. The second part of tshuva is going into a good space is not about doing anything wrong. That you have to do penitence. And this is actually a, a novel idea. Because we always say, repentance, you know, repent for, you know, repent thee, or thee shall, uh, I shall die, you know, the uh, terrible things that you did. The higher level has got nothing to do. You've already been forgiven. That's already passed over. That wind of forgiveness that's passed over the soul. You've been purified, right, as we just mentioned in uh, the, big, the, the first part of chapter 8. Um, and now you're also returning to God. So what are you returning for? Not to rectify anything, not to fix anything, but to have a deeper union and oneness with God. So, he, um, he explains, or he gives a metaphor that we have a, you know, we have a union, a oneness with God. So there's a union when you are separated from God and now you become reconnected with God, right? As, but then there's a union of where you are sort of like um, a perfect, you know, uh, that where you're totally inseparable. So where does the disconnect come? So if you remember from the metaphor of blowing, God blows into us the breath of him, a part of him that gives us vitality, but it, our sins make that separation, right? Um, and then we have to return. But then there, and we return to and reconnect to Hashem. But there's the, and the, the breath of God comes into us, a part of us, but yet there's a, a separateness still, even through that tshuva, a cleansing, purify, but there's still a separateness. But then there's the breath 
before you blow as it's part of you then it comes separate it's still a, it's something of you but it became separate that breath so in the first kind of tshuva the breath now is not doesn't have because we've done penitence so there's no obstacle that's not allowing the breath that part of god to be a part of me it's there right i'm out of a bad place i'm now in a good place but i'm not in a good space yet or i'm not the complete space that i could be the greater level is a divine unity just like the breath before you blew it where's that breath it's in me and a part of me it's inseparable of me so likewise this higher level of tshuva called tshuva ilo um supernal tshuva or it's also called uh tshuva shlema a perfect tshuva right perfect in the sense that there's no separation between you and the divine between you and god in the first level there's still some kind of there was a separation you've now reconnected but it's like two things coming together to be connected this level is like there's a, something inseparable so what prompts this level uh, or, or what brings this about and how do you express this kind of chuva so the zohar explains that this higher level superno chuva is not rectifying anything but it's just engaging in the study of torah with love and awe of god and what are you returning then well you're returning to god you're returning the former hay in god's name which represents bina understanding understanding god the ways of god his torah which is his divine intelligence and wisdom that when we understand it when we learn it this level of bina the higher level of tshuva is about being in a good space this is a superior form of penitence that actually interesting um that makes this individual even greater than than the tzaddik than the righteous person So you can ask a question. Ah, I, do I, well, I? I can study Torah and do mitzvahs and so on with love and awe of God, without being um, pushed by tshuva, by return, penitence to Hashem. Again, penitence over here means, and 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 that's why maybe it's not good to use the English word because repentance is always thought of. You know repentance from something negative there's nothing negative in this supernal tshuva ilah this higher level of return nothing that is prompting you you've already dealt with all that that wind has passed and cleansed that light that that uh, that uh, breath of god that vitality of god has already brought the cleansing but there's this higher level that is by you engaging what we're doing right now Torah study so the Zoyar explains that when when you're when you're prompted by doing penitence tshuva to return to God it makes the study much more intense and much more forceful engagement of the heart as a result and that is the value of studying torah with love and awe of god that is prompted by tshuva by returning to god again let's bring this idea out or let me give you my take on this now when we understand that god is infinite and we're finite 
and there's this longing to return to connect just just to connect because God's infinite, you're finite, and, and you're growing, you're moving, you're doing, you're, there's nothing negative, nothing you've got to fix over here. But you're prompted by this, something that's greater than me, infinitely greater than me, that I want to return to. There's a, a, a feeling of, of, of a push from within, of getting closer. Right. As opposed to the saintly work of doing what you got to do at all times right always doing you know always thinking god what do you need from me i'm there for you i'm doing what you what you need that's like the righteous person who's always thinking about what god needs from them it's wonderful beautiful but that's that doesn't have a drive to it it doesn't have a passion to it so i'm here i'm here for you i'm here to serve god whatever it is that's the righteous path the Balchuva path, the, the master of return, this higher level, again, is not being prom- it, it, is not being prompted, not being prompted at all because you need to fix mend anything. It's being prompted be, by this great force and intense longing of the heart to just connect and wanting to have a deeper connection. And a deeper connection. So, perhaps the way we can, um, or the way I can understand this is, um, yeah, Maimonides gives a uh, something we just learned actually, which we'll be learning today. Twelve fifteen, by the way, twelve fifteen today is Maimonides' teachings. Um, please come and join us. Uh, we're going to learn three chapters as we do three chapters a day um, during the week, Monday through Friday. It's 12:45. Sunday is 12:15. So uh, a powerful idea. It says that we should have the love of God. This is not everybody can reach this. My mind is in yesterday's teachings. A love of God that we have in, that we learn in the Shema that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, right? So you have the love of God, and he gives a metaphor of like a man who is um, passionately in love with a woman that constantly on his mind. And always wanting to be with, connect with, and so on. So he says, um, that's the metaphor for us to understand about God. In other words, there's always a, 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 a desire to be connected, to be, uh, to, to, to find, you know, the, the way to just um, to connect. So that's the metaphor that the, that the Rambam gives, Maimonides gives. So um, that's the way for the... Uh, to have this kind of, uh, as he calls it, lovesick desire to connect to Hashem. So here, this is what it means, the the tshuva manner, as opposed to, the again, the righteous way is always thinking, God, what do you need from me? What's needed? I'm there for you. But that doesn't create a passion. That doesn't create a longing. I'm there in constant service. The, 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 the drive isn't a proactive one um, in the same manner, or it's not as fervent, it's not as intense desire to connect. That's a powerful idea. That's really not so simple, obviously. And in human relationships, to take, you know, my take on that is uh, very difficult. You know, that we should um, be on uh, connected to a spouse in such a manner that we are, uh, you know, the intense longing to connect. Uh, um, which probably should not be all the time. <laughs> it will fizzle out. But towards God, that's a different thing, you know. But in a human relationship, there is that. 
concept also, um, which is not such a simple thing. In the next chapter, we're going to get into understanding how do you get there? I mean, uh, how do you achieve that with God? How can you achieve this higher level? Um, but more on that for now. We're open for questions. We're open for comments, thoughts. <whistles> Jeffrey, good morning. Good morning. And happy July 4th. Our uh, national holiday. Yes. Uh, happy yes. July 4th to everybody. So, um, so I guess I'm thinking in a more kind of practical way. And, you know, uh, uh, um, so I've had a, a um, uh, I've done something, done something negative and, and I'm uh, doing my um, repentance to someone and then there's this next level that you're describing. But is this is the idea of this that that this is something that happens frequently? I mean, we don't want to do things wrong and we're not planning to and you know, but is this something that, you know what, something happened ha something happened this week and this is and you know, and I'm going to try to go through this process as you're describing and hopefully end up with a really positive, you know, feeling at the very end. Or is this just like, is this is this a, um, a a goal in general, or is this a practical matter? I guess is what I'm saying. Are, are you talking about the second level of tshuva, or are you talking? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes. okay. So we're going to get more into it. We, we, you know, the Alter Rebbe just introduced the the topic now, right? In other words, the, the idea of a, 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 a having a strong desire to connect is the idea. Um, so, you know, yeah, we have things we need to fix. But that being said, they can be simultaneous. So, you know, there's things that we need to mend um, and to take care of, to own, as we've spoken about previously. But at the same time, it's not a contradiction. Because it's coming from a different part of of the soul, so to speak, right? There's a there's a part of the soul that needs to be mended, and there's a part of the soul that it doesn't need mending; it just needs connection. So, in, in like in human relationships, there's part of me that in a, in a relationship that there's things that need to be bettered because there's things that are not so great, but then there is the aspect of just the desire of the relationship, of the connection itself in the positive, you know. So it's not, you know, even though here it goes one to the other, and the truth is, you know, if, if the truth be said, you know, obviously if there's things that are, that are in a relationship that have not been dealt with and you're soiled, you're dirty because of it, um, and you've affected another, so, you know, yes, those things need to be um, dealt with. But at the same time, think about it. Um, there is the positive aspect of the relationship that is there, no doubt, that, um, that a person wants to be connected. And therefore, they have that strong longing to connect. Um, so, you know, that's the way it would be in... in in, in human terms, that's the way it would be in human terms. That's the way it is also in godly terms. Um, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, after the idea is that, you know, after you have a fight with your spouse or friend or whatever it is, and then you make up, sometimes there's like real super closeness after the fight because you're, right. you're, you've reached your one, your one mind, so to speak. Yeah. So 
Um, so that's the first part of where you fixed that, but then the, the, that can then bring you to another level of that, you know, the, the desire to connect on, on that deeper level in a positive way, in the more proactive way, as opposed to, um, you know, uh, non-proactive, shall we say. Right, and that and and what's the proactive over here is because there's that in that stronger desire now for the connection because of the healing that took place. So that definitely you know will bring that possibility much more so because of you know the the healing process that took place. That yeah, that's what you're saying, right? Absolutely, A very beautiful idea. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. So let me, before I lose a feed over here, Anna, want to explain how is it that our compassion over the divine in us can add more to the Ein Soif infinite compassion? We said the Ein Soif is infinite, perfect, and whole essence, nothing we add nor subtract. No, what, oh, okay, very good. So let me explain, Anna, what, what, what we're saying is that we're, our, through the compassion that we have, what we're doing, what we're accomplishing, is arousing the God's infinite compassion. That was the idea. It, it, it's not that we're creating something. We're, we're arousing it. You know, it, it's, it's dormant, so to speak. It's not, there isn't a divine flow from the infinite compassion of God that's going through his name that is giving us, you know, that's bringing the cleansing um, and the purification to us until we arouse it that that is the point so it's not you're creating you're not creating god's compassion you're arousing it that it should flow and be brought down and drawn down to us and to bring that cleansing to us i hope that makes sense okay and let me know if that resonated andrew do you do they, the 13 attributes of mercy, which derive from the supreme will, cleanse our reincarnated soul when we do tshuva? That's a real good question. I mean, our soul the way it is today. You mean other reincarnations? Well, it, it, in a sense, yes, because the fact that you're reincarnated is to fulfill that which wasn't fulfilled previously. So it is, in that sense, it is. Yeah. Very good. Please share. I know now that. I know now, as I think. Okay. Was there any other questions? Any other questions? Any other comments? Any other thoughts? Eliana, David, Tim. Um, Vilma, Bacia. Let me see here if I missed any questions. Vilma, go ahead. So this is just a beautiful teaching about how all things can be mended. But there is this aspect of, you know, coming together, of making things whole. And that takes effort and good, you know, the goodwill of a person that wants to make things better and change. Absolutely. I mean, right, this is uh, all about us um, wanting to mend what we need to mend and to connect in, in a deeper manner. Um, Absolutely. You're right. Well, that sense of connection is really strong in human beings. Like, that's what we're here for, like, to connect to God and to each other. And when we don't have that, there's something profoundly missing. Absolutely. Yep. Yep, you're correct. Thank you. Matt, do you see a parallel between Shuva Elah and Ezekiel? Uh, God says quite strongly um, that he doesn't want the wicked to die, but for them to repent and to return to him. So, tshuva ilah, again, the supernal level of tshuva, the second 
uh, uh, level of tshuva has nothing to do with repenting from sin. Again, it's so counterintuitive. It's so counterintuitive. Repentance, and that's the problem because it's an English word, and it comes from you know the culture around us, which is uh, Western civilization based on uh, Christian uh, doctrine, and tr and repentance there is only that you don't go to hell, um, you know, and you're going to be saved, right? Repent thee, and you will be saved. So, um, and and that's all it's about. Because there, it's got nothing to do with the relationship, really, when you think about it. It's got to do about what you get from the relationship. There are things that you get from a person. Well, we've discussed this in the past, and I think, again, might be worthy to make sure that this is clear to us. Clear, clear to us. If there's things you want in the relationship, so the greatest thing that you want in a, in a, in, in a relationship with God is salvation. And that's the only thing that prompts you to do anything for God is so you can get salvation. Or, uh, you know, you want to get things in this world, but it's about things that to get from God. It's got nothing to do with the relationship. Chuba Ilah really brings out, you know, the concept of the relationship. Because the lower level of Chuba is about fixing things. It is fixing things in order to uh, make the relationship whole, absolutely, to return the hay in my soul, to return the hay in God's name, that it's connected to the previous le three letters, and um, and we get our vitality from the inner aspect of godliness, right? That the breath is coming a part of God into us, and that is about a connection, that we want to be connected to the inner aspect of God, the will of God, and not to the other side, to negativity. Um, but the higher level of truth even brings out more out. The idea that I, uh, what I want is the connection, the relationship. Because sin isn't prompting me to do a return to God. This is a perfect return. What's perfect? no reason for it except that that's my desire is to be connected in an inseparable way with God just like the breath metaphorically is you know inseparably within me before I blow it out that I should have that union oneness with God and that's going to be through study of Torah in particular right as we're doing now in a manner of love and awe of God and we're going to develop this idea further we just started it's just giving the sort of the, uh, the, the, the the skeleton of it and we're going to build it uh, further. But this is because we have an intense desire for the connection. Why do you have that intense desire? Just because you want to connect. <laughs> Not because you want something from God. And again, in human relationships, the same thing. If I want something from my spouse, if I want something from my kids, that I want, then it's not really them that I want, that I want to connect to. It's the thing that I get from them, whatever it is. I need love, so, you know, all you need is love. No, that's a thing. That's all you need is love. All I need is you. That's different. I don't, I don't, I just need you. I just need you, God. All I need is you, my spouse. All you need, you, my child. It's not what I have from you, not the things that you give me, that that's what I want. It, it, this idea I have to constantly go over and over because it's so counterintuitive because uh, we live in a world of consequences. Right, and consequences are things that are a consequential of you know whatever, um, and um, we naturally desire things because that's what our senses know about things. My eyes see things that you know I desire. My uh, taste buds taste things that are delicious. 
and um, my ears hear things that are pleasant. So I want the things that are pleasant that I hear. I want the, the, the on the, on my tongue the the, the delicacies that are uh, delicious to it. I want the, the 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 beauty that I perceive. All those are things. But do I want you? No, or just the thing you know. I want your beauty. I want your wealth. I want your uh, your kindness. But where's you? You know, if you told if you if you told somebody that you're marrying them for their money, they probably wouldn't appreciate that. Why is that any different than I'm marrying you for your love? Inherently or in, essentially, it's no different. It's still. I'm not marrying you because I want to be connected to you, or uh, the truth is. Maybe that's why you're getting married initially, but it should grow from that things that is childish to an adult form that it's you, that it's you, not because of the things. So we have to grow we, because as a child, we, we live with five senses, right? And because of the five senses, there's the things that our senses uh, engage and therefore desire things but then we grow up and we say share your things <laughs> right uh, things aren't so important people are more important relationship is more important than the things from the relationship that is a maturity that's a growing up so the higher level of chuva is definitely expresses that i mean even the lower level is also but the higher level even more so expresses that idea any questions on that any comments any thoughts on that rabbi it's it's not about a bargain or an exchange i think that's another idea so i like i'll be good to you if you be good to me that's not the question here right exactly yeah even though, again, in, in, instinctually we are that way, but um, yeah, that's the uh, you know the the child manner that we are, that we need to rise above and, and grow into the adult form of uh, of relationships. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let me see, I see another question over here on Facebook. Are compassion arousing the Ain Safe? Yeah, our compassion is arousing the Ain Safe. Exactly. The lower hay is, yeah, is where the compassion is being aroused. Exactly. Yes, yeah, Richard, correct. Um, okay, and then Richard, I think I answered. I saw here some I know now that I want to get to. Um, Liba says, I know now that there is a part of my soul that needs mending and another part that only needs correcting. Uh, no, I don't know if it needs correcting. It needs connection. When we feel the push and the longing waiting us to reconnect within a deeper connection and that uh, then, then that compassion to return arouses God's compassion to bring the flow downward. Yes. Genius says, I know now that the part of Shuva process our compassion for the divine soul in us elicits an infinite God, the compassion that brings new light, cleansing our soul from the stain left from previous transgression day. Excellent. Well said. Uh, Jay asks, if people commit grave sins and then return, re, uh, return to God, praying, asking to protect them from judgment, and, and God forgive them. And then, um, no, so Jay, we, we can't confuse two things: um, God's forgiveness and cleansing, 
And if you did any grave sin, um, God forbid uh, someone murders somebody, right? So they need to go stand before a court of justice and be tried. And whatever judgment is um, needed, um, has uh, your tshuva will not change the judgment. Okay. The action is the action that needs to be um, dealt with in the court of law. That you can't take away someone murdered somebody, an innocent, innocent, uh, innocent life. You can't return that, and therefore there is um, the law that needs to be adjudicated. Tshuva is between you and God. Can it be that you did something very wrong, and you will maybe, we don't have it today, but there can be in, in Jewish law the death sentence. So you can have the death sentence, and you can still do complete tshuva, and God will cleanse. Right? God will cleanse. And you will still get the death sentence. Two things have not a contradiction at all. God knows what's in your heart. He knows if you've done tshuva. And that doesn't, though, uh, dictate the court of law. Because the court of law doesn't know what's going in your heart. In any case, it's not about your heart. It's about the actions that were taken. And the, and the result of those actions that a person is responsible for. Period. Period. And that's where it begins and ends. Tshuva, returning to God. So that doesn't mean, doesn't mean if you can do something terrible in God and you can't um, cleanse the soul. The soul can still be cleansed. It's possible. Um, but it doesn't mean, again, the consequence of those actions, that there, uh, that there isn't a consequence for those actions. Right? Two separate things. I hope that's clear. Good question, Jay. Uh, David, I know, uh, does Hashem scale his compassion to the tshuva based on how we forgive others? Probably. <laughs> That's a good question. If we're not forgiving of others, then it's probably God's not going to be so forgiving to us. That's a very, actually, thank you for bringing that up, Vida. Probably not so forgiving. So yes, uh, part of the process is how we're able to forgive others will be an indication of how God will be able to forgive us. But, you know, that's a, a part of things. It's not the only thing, because you could still do tshuva and ask for forgiveness and be cleansed because of what you did. But um, probably such a person, you know, if you're doing it just so you can uh, get the cookie at the end, you know, from the cookie jar, uh, that, um, so then that's not real tshuva. It's not about the relationship. It's about the punishment. I don't want to get punished. So it's not going to be a real complete tshuva. It won't be... It won't be it won't be truth and truthful and direct, right? Because it won't it'll be it'll be about victim. You know, I don't want to be a victim. I don't want to get punished. Not because I have compassion on, over myself and where my soul comes from and what I did to it and what I did to Hashem. Uh, Elizabeth, how does this uh, does it pertain to Cain and Abel and God's acceptance of their offer? Well. He accepted Abel's, but not Cain's, so that's why Cain killed Abel, right? So I'm not exactly certain what the question, what you mean. Sorry. All right, folks, a reminder that we're going to learn Rambam in just under an hour. <laughs> um, that's going to be on 770-770-6085 um, on Zoom, and also on Chabad, uh, also on Chabad, uh, ZK Facebook. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad, Zich and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful day and a good Tavoch.